Sermon on Thomas, and the Gospel on Thomas, we see that Jesus makes a statement, peace be with you. And somehow today in this message I'd like to bring together a sense of the holy humor idea in, in what is otherwise a world that sometimes doesn't seem so humorous, does it? The second Sunday of Easter builds on the good news we celebrated last Sunday. Jesus was dead and now he is alive. This is good news. This is good news for us. The women came to the tomb in despair. But they left the tomb in delight. Quite a story. Sure, lots of questions, but the bottom line is that Christ is risen. Holy Humor Sunday continues in that celebration. It celebrates the fact that the resurrection of Jesus is God's ultimate, ultimate victory over evil and death. It is a testament to the God who, as the psalmist says in the second chapter, fourth verse, sits in the heavens and laughs at the foolishness of humanity and any forces that might seek to thwart divine purposes. God is in control. God has a purpose. Man doesn't always follow that purpose, and certainly we know the evil world doesn't, does everything against God's purpose, but God has a purpose. He is in control. The, the scriptures give us the end of the story. And in the meantime, we know that Christ has died on the cross, shed his blood, and brought us back into communion with God. There's, there is a Bavarian practice that has the faithful gathering back in church on Easter afternoon for a time of storytelling. There in the early Orthodox tradition, in the Easter Monday gatherings, they told stories, they shared jokes, and they laughed together. To this day, in Slavic regions, Christians gather the day after Easter for folk dancing and feasting. We like the feasting part. I doubt that we'll be doing the folk dancing so much, although well, we kind of did there in the Nassau. But as wonderful as last Sunday made us feel, especially after the good food, the wonderful Sunday School Fellowship, the awesome worship we had through Easter, Monday dawns. Monday dawns. And life sometimes isn't the flowers and the fragrances that it seemed like it was on Sunday. Come to church and all is well. And we smile and we say joyful, <coughs> peaceful things that we share with each other. And then Monday comes and sometimes it isn't quite the same. The world intrudes upon us. The world comes upon us with everything. Everything. I wouldn't even begin to name what up that is, but you know what I mean. There are more news, troubles around the world, there's economic woes, and there's still images of devastation and death to deal with. Forget about changing the channel on TV, because no matter what channel you go to, you can see more of it. So we turn it off. It's because we think, okay, we'll turn it off. And that way we can share the joys of family and spend quality time with one another. And then we remember that we need two vehicles, three babysitters ready on call, good luck, three calendars, an appointment secretary, just to say hi to each other sometimes. Because our lives are busy. We're busy. And sometimes it takes a lot of work just to try to get everybody around the supper table at the same time. And some of you will smile because you know what, that, what that's like, how I remember. It's no wonder that we hear the gospel lesson from John from this Sunday. The disciples, at least most of them, are in a locked room. I don't know how they locked the room, but I can imagine they were pretty scared. They might have had duct tape, deadbolts, locks, whatever it took because they were scared to death <clears throat> that the same fate that took their master on Calvary might be awaiting them as well. They were pretty scared. And then suddenly, here's Jesus. But what does he say? Peace be with you. When the risen Christ said those words, it was more than just a greeting. It was more than just an announcement. Literally translated, peace 
be with you. It's a pronouncement of well-being, of wholeness. The fact that there can be completeness in Christ. Peace be with you. How we need to hear those words. How we need to hear them on a Sunday, but we need to hear them on a Monday. We need to hear them on a Thursday night. We need to hear them on a Friday. Peace be with you. Peace. Number one, it means peace with your past. There's so many people who spend so much time looking through their rearview mirror that they don't they miss what lies ahead. They miss what lies ahead of them. And they eventually crash in the process. Jesus simply told his disciples and all of us that forgiveness, forgiveness is ours. Forgiveness is attainable, whatever that past is. Peace. Be at peace with your past. Take it to Christ. And then be at peace with it. Maybe Jesus was remembering that story that's not told in our scriptures. It was following the resurrection when John found Peter and ran up to him and he excitedly he said, Peter, I have some good news and I have some bad news. Peter took hold of John and calmed him down. Take it easy, John. What's the good news? John said, the good news is that Christ is risen. Peter said, that's great, but what's the bad news? John, looking around cautiously, said he's really steamed about Friday. <laughs> it was supposed to be funny. <laughs> Friday. We know that's not true. This is absolutely not the way Christ was. He was not steamed about Friday, was he? He washed the disciples' feet before they even ran away, before they even disappeared and so on. He washed their feet. He knew he wasn't steamed about Friday. Jesus, <coughs> peace be with you, gave the disciples and us peace for our past. Number two, it can also bring peace to our present as well. Let me ask you a simple question. Where do you need peace in your life right now? Think about that. Where do you need to have peace in your life right now? All of us, I'm sure, can attest to the fact that life seems a little unmanageable at times. We live in a broken world. People's lives are daily being torn apart and challenged. And often when there's no faith to bring the person through whatever the trial they're facing, everything seems to fall apart. And even when we try to have as much faith as we possibly can have, it seems a little difficult. But we know why Jesus died. He died to fix broken people and broken situations. We know that Jesus wants to bring peace into our greatest storms. The gospel song says it all when we sing, On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. Christ is the foundation, and in He is the rock that we stand on. He is the only rock that will stand strong. As Christians, we know our net worth is much less important than our eternal worth. Struggles we experience today build the foundation for a greater faith in Jesus Christ tomorrow. We walk by our faith. That's what our whole walk is about. It's faith. And sometimes we don't get to see. It's not by our sight. Because we know that there is only one person qualified under heaven and earth to sufficiently deal with the present realities that we face. And that is Jesus Christ in our hearts and on the cross. It is Jesus Christ who can take the brokenness and the strife and still make something out of our lives, and we thank Him. Peace be with you. It speaks healing to our past. It speaks, it speaks healing to our present. But it also speaks wholeness to our future. We hear of Thomas, who doubted that Jesus has risen. You know the story. But Thomas experienced it then there. When Jesus showed up on the scene and proclaimed, Peace be with you. It was that encounter with the risen Lord that empowered Thomas and the rest to publicly and powerfully proclaim the good news, the news that over time would turn the world upside down. Jesus breathed his spirit on the disciples before he ascended into heaven, and then he sent the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And they became powerful, powerful 
multiple disciples. With eyes that were no doubt as big as saucers, Thomas, Thomas didn't even bother to check before he responded, My Lord and my God, when he saw the holes, the nail holes in Christ's hands. Now Thomas is in on the joke too. As the writer in Ecclesiastes has it, there is a time to weep and a time to laugh. And we know that this is the time to laugh. Thomas now gets it. Thomas got it. Thomas got what it was all about. And it was a joyful time. You may have heard this. An Episcopal bishop went to an unfamiliar church. Now this is a joke, okay? So listen, be careful to this one. An Episcopal bishop went to an unfamiliar church to celebrate the Eucharist, which is what we call communion. There was a microphone on the altar, and he was uncertain whether it was switched on or not, so he tapped gently on it with no result. Then leaning very close to it, he said in a loud whisper, which echoed through the whole church, there is something wrong with this microphone. While well, the well-trained and responsive congregation, very familiar with the liturgy and how you respond, says, and also with you. <laughs> 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 I'm not a jokester. <laughs> when Jesus said, peace be with you, he was giving Thomas, the disciples, and even us, the hope we are so desperately in need of. And that is to continue our journey with this living Christ. Hope that because, that because he lives, we too will live. Hope in the future that people, events, or circumstances will be the way they are to be. Because God is in charge and in control of our lives and he has a purpose and a plan it seems difficult sometimes but his plan is wonderful hope that says we don't have to live in our past we don't have to struggle in our present and we don't have to fear our future <laughs> it's the only hope that says this easter christ christ is risen and he says peace be with you and it will make all the difference. Life will not be the same. Like Thomas, may it mark our lives with a purpose, with meaning, and with new direction. And I end with this illustration. It was a couple of weeks after the resurrection when someone approached Joseph of Arimathea, articulating their surprise in him, allowing Jesus to be buried in Joseph's newly hand-viewed stone too. Joseph simply shrugged his shoulders and said, You only needed it for the weekend. <laughs> Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.